Happy New Year's Day. What's the song? Da da. No, you sing that on New Year's Eve. Yeah, but last Old night. Lang sign. Da 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 da. Somebody cue Reliant K. Yes, it's the, it's only, the only version I'll listen to. Only band we've ever had cover that. But Happy New Year's Day. Yeah. Now Nikki and I are supposed to be back in the studio tomorrow, but I'm feeling sick already. You are not. <laughs> No, that's your back. that's your December cough. <laughs> Just because we switched into a new year and a new month, you still might have your cough. Oh uh, man, I hope that's not true. <laughs> I hope I come back healthier than ever. And then we go to the wing buffet, and then I'm like, I'm so sick. Yeah, tomorrow we might go. We'll see about that. So in the podcast, I talk about who my favorite cycle breaker is. Wine chilled on the floor of the Mediterranean that Sea. That is my favorite. That's one only, of my favorites. It's the only kind I'll drink. People were, people still reference that one. Yeah. Um, a, <laughs> we got some Obadiah <laughs> stories in here. Botulism cheese. Yay! When you went to the movie? Uh, the woman who came by and started eating my pizza. I don't... Uh, Wait, I don't you'll, remember that. You'll remember it. Yeah. Uh, Nikki's vanilla addiction. Oh, yeah, boy. The riot Talk goes... Talk about a, a new year where we can't... I've, I've curbed that. But we got to keep curbing it. Oh, we're going to curve it by pouring a whole bottle into a Sprite when we go get wings. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. I'm not. I'm, I'm being sli- st- I, That's the way I slip you a Nikki. I'm like, here, Nikki, have some water. No, Why is it's it called bubbling? a Nikki. You slip me <laughs> a Nikki. I slip you a Nikki. It's putting it's like, vanilla in things. It's terrible. You're like, this is water. Why is it so bubbly? I don't know. Taste it. <laughs> And you're all the way back in. You put, you're Mr. Hyde all of a sudden. No. You're like, you're all the I'm way in. I've like a month. I haven't had it in forever. Well, how come you don't brag about giving things up like I do? Why don't you I, share? Why don't you share every aspect of your life on the radio like I do? You hey, mean God. like when you quit soda and we had a countdown every day? You okay? I I'm keep surprised. Things quiet. I thought I kept some of that in the show. Oh no, no, no! I didn't because I had. I basically did. I know it felt like I, forever, but do you know at least in the bits it was a once a week check in? Really? Yeah. So even though you felt like every day I didn't shut up about it, it was just once a no, week. No, you only archived. Yeah, that's true. You probably talked about that's it more actually than. Bro, that's probably true. Um, but in this, you'll see right after. Oh, the riot went shooting. Yeah, we did that. You can see the archive of that on our Facebook page. And soda is an emotional crutch. That's where you're also talking about Followed it. Followed up by soda dreams because I had a I had a dream about soda and Lecrae. <laughs> And, you know, I just, I had to leave it in there. You had to do that. So don't forget to join us at Radio You Riot. This is our last of our look back at 2017. Tomorrow we'll be back with a brand new we'll show. We're making new memories. We got our first of the new memories of 2018. There you go. So you guys have a great new year and get ready to re-enter the horror and nightmare of day-to-day life tomorrow. Oh, man. What? Yes. Can't wait. Here comes the Sprite. <laughs> <laughs> Here? Oh, okay. Okay. That, that means the riot. Uh. Radio U is now accepting auditions for a new morning show. As you can see, the bar is pretty low. It's all fake news. It's the worst of the riot on Radio U. Mm-hmm. Nikki, I... I'm usually not what I would consider to be a snob of any kind. It's like, you know what? I'll drink your cold brew coffee, your hot coffee. I'll drink your your instant coffee. Like, you're whatever. Okay, well, (laughs) I mean, like, there are... Okay, I saw the line there. All right. So you are a little snobby. No, I mean, like, if I have to, I will. Like, not on a daily basis. Um, And the other thing that I, you know, like, I've got my instant coffee line. Yeah. Okay. I have a Diet Pepsi line that, again, sometimes I'll cross, but let's be honest. Well, only if the restaurants sold their soul to Pepsi. Um, yeah. Otherwise, you prefer usually a Diet Coke. Yeah, and then the other line that I have, and this is one that I won't cross under any circumstances, is that I won't drink any wine that hasn't been chilled on the floor of the Mediterranean for at least a year. Which is why you're not a wine drinker. Yeah, I mean, if it has not been on the floor of the Mediterranean Ocean, sea, whatever. Is that where they're storing wine? Well, they got this thing going now. Is that There's on accident? This, or There is a, a wine company manufacturer, uh, whatever. Pyramid scheme? <laughs> that too. Um, and they are now taking their wine. They're doing this test where they are storing it on the floor of the Mediterranean in the south of France for a year. And then they want to see because... The floor of the Mediterranean, constant pressure, constant temperature, like mm. there's no variation. They're seeing what it does to they it. They want to see, man, when this stuff comes up, 
how lit are we going to get from this Mediterranean <laughs> terrible, wine? Because it's like what it is with coffee, where they're like, don't you don't you taste the difference? And you're like, no, but you can't say you don't. Of course I do. You're like, oh my gosh, it's just aerated. It's just wonderful. This is the Mediterranean <laughs> wine, right? That you're sure this Because it's amazing. <laughs> That was other this, stuff? It's like, was this the pour over? It's hot garbage. <laughs> it's like, I don't know. I wouldn't dare insult myself with that. So I even now, if you were to ever taste this Mediterranean wine from the bottom bottom of the, the floor of it, you wouldn't even know what you were doing, probably. Wrong. Because that's my line now. I refuse to drink any wine that has not been aged at the bottom of the Mediterranean for uh, at least a year. A year. But if it's not any longer, I mean, it should be five years, but at least would, a year. Like for everybody, uh, like they'd test like boxed wine or something down there. <laughs> like I, I, no? I'm going to tell you. No. I, I don't think that's it. No. Uh, be awesome. You're scuba diving. You're like, what is this? I just found a box of wine. Who wants to drink no, it? No, like the I whole found- field of it. It's like wine bottles and boxes of wine and everything. Little airplane size wines just all on the bottom of the ocean. I that would that'd be terrifying. Just like, hey, you want to? We found these bottles, these boxes at the bottom of the ocean. Who wants to drink some? Like, what did you find? Uh, I don't know if we can tell you what we found. Like, does it occur to you that perhaps these were buried here because there was a great evil and they just assumed that no one would ever find mm. this at the bottom of the ocean? What if you, instead of wine, I like sparkling water in different waters? <laughs> it's like, Why don't it's you just redund- drink the ocean? It's redundant. Like, <laughs> I, took, I took my bottled water and put it at the bottom of the I ocean. I took the glacier water that I like yeah. and I put it in the bottom of the Mediterranean, yep. mm-hmm. a different type of like water setup thing, yeah. and, and let it stay there for a year. All natural refrigeration. Mm-hmm. It's perfect. So We wouldn't do well if it was a... <laughs> it was anything besides like a diet coke well nikki the problem is is that you and i have not allowed our taste to be refined to such a level that we can appreciate the craftsmanship that goes into a fine diet coke so let alone you know or yeah like they find two liters down there i'm in (laughs) at least you'll know it's okay because it'll still be brown blackish sure that's the color it's supposed to be it's good You're listening to the worst of the riot 2017, which means you should probably be rethinking your life right now. Radio U. Man, Nikki, I'm reading a great article on a website I've never visited in my life, New York Magazine. Um, And this write up is about friends and social media. Yeah. You're like, well, I have friends and I'm on social media. This is very relevant to me. I must read this article. So this is fascinating. It is about uh, this girl is talking about how she had a friend that she met IRL and they got along famously, just loved each other, became really great friends. And then she started like following her on Twitter, friended her on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, all the social medias. Yeah. And... Now she absolutely can't stand this Uh, person that she met in person, loved in person, got along so mm -hmm, well, mm -hmm. and now absolutely cannot stand them on social media. Here's the problem, though. You friended them across the board. They're going to know. Oh, yeah. When you pull out, like it's... It's going to cause some problems, but you might like a person in real life, but hate them online. Yeah. Okay. But like, do you have people like that in your life? I do. I see. I do, too. And it's not you. No, no, no. It's not that. But I, I don't like you. I've noticed you. Even I don't like in real you. life. Look, this. I like you better on social media <laughs> no, than I do in real life. It can happen with relatives because you tend to add them, you know, on all types of social media. Uh-huh. But you don't necessarily get along with them or like everything that yes. they do. And especially during uh, the whole election time, like I just didn't want to hear from any friends, anybody. <laughs> well, nobody, so, nobody did. No one did at that time. But you just might not get along personality wise with someone online because people act differently there. Well, and it's an interesting thing, too, that your online personality is different. I had a friend. Uh, this has been a couple years ago who I'm not making this up, reached out to me to talked to me about how concerned he was about me about how materialistic and shallow i had become 
It's like, I'm not. Whoa. I'm not making that up. And that's crazy. But and he was basing it off of your your er, social networking posts? Basically, like the things that I post about on social media. Which, which aren't even like that. Well, no. I mostly post about movies, video games, and whatever's bugging me. Work stuff. And, well, like, for example, yesterday, if you follow me on Twitter, you'll notice that after I stretched and screamed, oh, yeah, I thought that I was finally turning... Chris, not coughing, buddy. We're on the air here, okay? <laughs> Did you not cough? Chris, it's okay, okay? <laughs> you know, it's just him. You Take just your cough, cough drops, you all right? You need to, all right? So anyway, back to the beginning of my <laughs> story. So you were tweeting because you were at the workout And club. I was stretched. No, I was here in the studio oh, alone, <laughs> and I stretched, and I was like, oh, yeah! Like, great stretch. And then I was like... I'm going to turn into the Kool-Aid man. Yes, you are. I'm about to run through this so, wall right now. That's the stuff you post, and your friend was concerned that you'd become shallow and materialistic. Yes, because I only posted about movies I wanted to see and games, games that I wanted to buy. So, you know. But that can cause a, a riff. Yeah. It, an Oculus riff. So what is the which you also post about? <laughs> Which can cause people to just wonder about you. But see, like, they'd be like, well, he spent all this money, wasted his money on... Wasted his life. On virtual reality when they don't know. You got a great Craigslist deal on that thing, and it was practically explain, a steal. Can't explain it all. So, I understand the problem. I I wonder, like, that... But it, this article makes me wonder, like, I wonder how annoying I am on social media uh, versus in person. Because the only thing I have going for me, I think is that I'm pretty annoying in person. So I feel like if you find my social media presence annoying, I'm giving a true representation. <laughs> they just find you annoying everywhere. But, so, I mean, it's a But I think you shine, you shine on Twitter because it's a condensed amount of characters. You sure. can't go too far, and it's short and sweet. And you do really well where you just hit them with something zing. funny. You know, like, oh, little yeah, zing. Kool-Aid man. There you go. There's zing. your post. Where Facebook, it's a little bit more in trouble because it can be a little bit lengthier. Oh, I don't... Uh, but you don't post there. But see, I don't share... it. What people have to understand is like, I don't share any of the deep down stuff. No, that's locked away. doesn't mean it's not there. It just means I'm shallow and materialistic. <laughs> so... So what does the study say? Is there anything no, else? No, it's not a study. It. it was just an article. It's an article this about it? girl was saying that like she was starting to meet people that she loved in real life and then hated them on social media. So maybe you... Okay. Sometimes you just unfollow. You don't unfriend, you unfollow. Mm -hmm. or, or on Twitter, you mute. I love the fact that there are all these ways that you can hide the fact that you're no longer listening to them online. It's but great. you don't want to crush them by not following anymore, because then that, that adds its own thing. You don't want to unfollow or unfriend. You just mute and... Un well, yeah, unfollow, which is different on Twitter. You, you oh, We understand it. exactly what you're saying. The worst of the riot 2017. We edited out all the good stuff. <laughs> And this is what was left. Radio U. What is the old saying that's like, if you keep doing the same thing over and over again, but expect a different result, that's the definition of insanity? Mm -hmm. Dude, how many insane things are you doing in your life right now? I could just, how much time do you have to listen to me? <laughs> like, well, you've, you've given Obi a lot of time, I know already, but <laughs> he wants just a little bit more to go over all of them. I stay up late and get up early. Why am I tired? Well, when's it going to change? Like it's shocking every day. I know. It's like it's the same that's thing. That's just one. That's just, yes, that's just one of the things that I can point to <laughs> as a great example. So what you end up in is like a cycle of stuff, right? How about this one? Someone's mean to you. You're mean back to them. And then they're mean to you because you were mean to them. But then you're being mean to them because they're being mean back to you. And then you're being mean to them, and they're being mean to you, and pretty soon it's just like, when did it all start? And when will it stop? But I have to be mean to them because of what they were mean about. Here's the great thing about Jesus. Jesus is not just interested in, like, you going to heaven and blah, blah, blah. He's interested in Tuesday. God's interested in today and what you've got going on today, right now, today. And he wants to teach you a different way to live, a different way to do things. A better way to do things. Now, it's not always going to be easy, but think about this. This person's mean to you, so you're mean to them, so they're mean to you, so you're mean to them, and back and forth and back and forth, and all of a sudden, you just go, I forgive you, and I'm not going to be mean back. Now, they're going to probably, probably keep being, still be probably mean Probably going to be mean. Could be mean again, mean again. But see, there's only one thing that's going to break a cycle of mean on mean on mean on mean on mean, and someone's got to stop, and Jesus wants to teach you how to do that. 
Jesus likes to break cycles that people are stuck in. So I don't know what kind of cycle you're in. Are you stuck in like addiction where it's like, you know, you do the thing, then you feel really bad about the thing, then you're tired of feeling bad. So it leads you to doing the thing again because you feel good for a while. And then you're like, I shouldn't do that. And like cycle, cycle, cycle on and on and on. God wants to break some cycles in your life. He wants to show you a different way to do things. Now, of course, you know, you start a relationship with God, which will give you a chance to do that. Um, But you need to listen to what God has to say. And you need to get out there and do it because he really wants to see something change in your life. And it's going to be the two of you going at it together. You you know, he's showing you a different way to do things. You're doing things a different way. And you're going to see things in your life change. If you're up for something different, you want to stop doing the same thing and expecting a different result, say, Jesus, I need that. I need a different way to do things. I need you to come into my life. I need you to fill me with your spirit. And I want to know you and what you're about. And I want you to show me how to do things. And man, God loves you so much. Even though you're not going to get everything right, you know, we're not perfect. I'm not perfect. God is committed to being with you day in and day out. Day in and day out, always there with you, being your friend, loving you, and helping you do things a little bit different. It's the most egregious, stupid, embarrassing moments of the entire year. Played over and over again until you finally lose it. (laughs) It's the worst of the riot 2017 on Radio U. Nikki, obviously I wish that you were with me all the time, no matter what. Besties till the end. Um, but I especially wished that you were with me Thursday night. Uh, I went away on this retreat, and Thursday night uh, I was in this area where I had run into a friend of mine, and we were like, let's go eat. So we went to this pizza place, yeah. and uh, I mean, the, he and I were just talking about you the whole time. Wow. Um, <laughs> He's just like, you know, what is it really like? <laughs> How is she me doing? <laughs> you know, how's her hair look these days? I mean, all the questions. Sure. And so I was filling him in on all the details, showing him photos. We were watching Facebook videos and uh, just having a great Nikki centric time. Sure. And we're in the middle of all of that. And I'm sitting there. I've got my pizza. He's got his pizza. And this lady walks by our table and she goes, that pizza looks good. Oh, one of those ladies. Can I have a piece of your pizza? As a joke, right? No. Really? You're serious. Oh, people have joked that before. Yeah. Like as a conversation starter. Can I have a piece of your pizza? And I was like, sure, here. So she just took a piece of pizza and stood there and ate it for a while and then walked off. Was she... Nope, she wasn't. A customer? Yes, yes, she was. She was at she another had table. She also ordered a pizza. She was from another table. Did she seem like she had other things with the pizza? No, she seemed sober. Were you in a small town and like maybe this is something well, I mean, you do? It, I mean, it wasn't the city. Well, <laughs> that's why you're country folk. Yeah, she, no, she you was country pizza. folk. Uh, her uh, like sister friend, whatever, came over and was like, "I'm so sorry." She's just like that. Um, and some people don't have the same boundaries that other people do. I know. And I would like to, I just submit the idea that those people that have less boundaries come and find me. Don't they? Yes. Cause don't we, got, they? we got boundaries. Don't they? They come and they, find me. They do. It seems like you have a beacon of like, I do. come push his button. See what I, he'll do. I, I'm attra- like crazy is attracted to me. That's it. And I don't mean like attracted, like, no, like it just, no, it's, a, mean, it's, it's, it just comes there and just, there it is. I could go into a room and whoever the crazy people are, I will find them. I could sit in the exa- corner quietly. It must be exhausting because no matter what you do, something happens. Whereas like if I just went to the pizza place, I would you have just got your pizza and my left. pizza. Maybe I'd get a coupon. <laughs> like they've been like here, half, like, half off. Hey, here's Nikki. <laughs> Frank, you know what? You just take the pizza. You We're just glad you're hand, here. You can people taking your pizza yeah this lady wanted my pizza how weird it was weird and at the same time it was just one of those things where my thought was like man this lady she's bold enough to ask for pizza sure take a piece well maybe it's our bad like with our culture and our style and our jadedness and maybe in other parts of the world it'd be like sure of course we all sit at the same table and why are we separated by other booths and stuff? And so you're saying why? What's your pizza and my pizza? We all put it into the same pot and we all eat. It's just the pizza. Yeah. In fact, why don't you guys come over and sit with us and listen to our private How conversation? Else will we make friends. 
I don't want to be friends with them. See, in other places, maybe they do, because then they're like, well, I needed help milking the cows. And then remember that lady we met with the pizza? Like That's how I gave you that's a sli- how smaller towns make it. I gave you a slice of my pizza. Could you come over and help I'm me raise borrow- this barn? Yeah, like I'm going to. Yes. Like I'm going to borrow the tractor. Do you mind, or the do you mind if I. <laughs> sure. So you were just in a different place. I guess. I feel like Whereas I live here, in a different like, place. You're like, are you looking at me? Because look- I don't think you should be looking at me. And that's our style in the place we're at. Now, if I could spin that into being some kind of financially viable whatever, but it's not. It's just the weird just peculiarity weird. of my life where I'm like, hey, I'm out. And people are like, yeah, can I eat your pizza? Like, no, it's my pizza. But then again, just have that face. I was just like, yeah, sure. Go ahead. So now, you knew that's your fault because you didn't teach her a lesson. I should have said no. Yeah. Get out of here. Get out. Yeah. You don't have to be mean or I'm rude. Gonna, I'm going to get the manager. You could just say, no, I have no room for you here. Like <laughs> the pizza well, place. She came back by again and said something else. And I just looked at it and I was like, yeah, but you can't have any more of my pizza if that's what you're here for. Oh my gosh. And she just kind of laughed. And the thing was, is that she, took it, as, she took it as a joke. But I was like, you know, it's a joke. But try me. Well, sometimes you've eaten all your pizza and you thought, you know, what if I just had one more? I wish I had one more piece. Or they wanted to order your type of pizza that you got and just wanted to try it. (laughs) The worst of the riot 2017 is exactly like Snapchat, except that it sucks and nothing ever gets deleted. It's the riot on Radio U. So last week I took a couple of days off. One of the things I did on those days off was I went walkabout and I ended up, I was going to a retreat. Not in Australia, though. No, no a, but a retreat just, here. Hey, just as scary. <laughs> just as scary. Just as scary. So on Thursday, I got in my car. I was all packed up to go on this thing. And on my way, I was like, you know what? I packed running clothes and I thought, oh, I think I might go running. Now, we all know what that usually means, that you're not going. Like if you, you, I, I packed my clothes, so I was going to, but then I just decided not to. No, I totally went. I found this state park on my way and I just saw the sign and I was like, I've never been there. Let's go there. So I got off the freeway, went to the state park, went in to see the ladies that work in the office, talked to them about their trails, got a map. And then you went I, out? I went out running and I had mapped out what was going to be about a 2.3 mile trail run. And about six miles later, I finally made it back to my car. Ooh. So was that like you took the wrong trail or do you think it was mismarked or? Well, here's the thing. I got out there with my trail map and I, I started trail mix. <laughs> my trail mix. Because that's how we do trails. And I was eating. And I ate so much I lost track and of where I was going. And for the trail mix, right? right? I would have starved. Six no. miles later. So I got out there and I'm, you know, just running along and I'm at trailhead D. Yeah. And then I was like, okay, I'm going to get up here. I'm going to find C. And there it was. I found C. No problem. And then from C, you're supposed to go uh, straight ahead a little bit. And then you go right. And then after, I think it was 1.4 miles or something, you would get to B. And I was like, man, no problem. I got this. I'm fine. And then you go to A and you're back? Or? Uh, I don't remember, whatever. But I had the map at the time. So I get there to see and I'm running. And then, I don't know, two-tenths of a mile or so after I got to that point on the map, I just got to this crossroads where literally four trails overlapped in this one spot. And guess what? There isn't markings on any of them. None of them. So then can't you use um, the the location of the sun or your compass and figure out the direction based on the map? I was in the woods. And I had a map. But Nikki, here's the thing. There's the map. You're supposed to look up and tell where it's at. Like, which way's north? It didn't matter. I mean, even even getting the map arranged correctly, none of the other trails Matched were on it? that map. No, they weren't on the map oh. at all. So, like, the running trails are marked, but guess what else is out there? Horse trails, snowmobile trails, and bike trails. And none of them are marked. And they're all uh, dirt trails. It's not like, well, the bike trail was obviously the paved one or, you know, whatever. And you've got that soft shredded sort of uh, cushiony stuff for the running trail. Yeah, like You didn't nothing. get any of that? No. So I'm just like, okay, well, they were supposed to go right. So I'm going right. And 
after what was 25 to 30 minutes, I you was were like, wrong. Yeah, Aww. I was. I, in fact, I actually, I had been running for what I thought was about 20 minutes. Yeah. And then I thought, okay, I'm going to set a timer on my phone. And when this timer's up, if I have not found C or B or whatever that guy was looking for on the map, I was like, I'm just turning around. Yeah. And so I ended up having to turn around. And I ran back. Did you start to feel panicky in any moment? No, because, I mean, it wasn't like I was, like, lost, lost. So, I mean, I figured, like, you know, if I keep going, eventually I'm going to run into something. But the problem is, if you pick, like, the horse trail, obviously it's a lot longer. It's a lot <laughs> longer. Because they assume you're on a horse. Well, there were, I mean, it was miles and miles and yeah. miles of trails. So, I, and I mean, I again, when you're headed out for, like, a two-mile run. There's a difference. And I, it took me, the whole thing was about an hour and ten minutes. So I think I ran about six miles. I can't be sure, but I'll tell you this. I was very tired when it was over, and I may have got some trail mix. So next time you see if they, like, have a map, ask them if there are more than one map. <laughs> and ask them if they have one map that has all the maps. All the maps in it. You need that. Yeah. Got to look out for that one. The riot solemnly swears to work harder and to do better next year. Yeah, we've heard that before. It's the worst of the riot 2017 on Radio U. I need your help because I I don't know what to do. So I'm going to start with Nikki. But if anybody else wants to get in here, just know that we... We have a, it's an open. Okay. We're having an open dialogue. Yeah, I mentioned earlier in the show that uh, I got uh, the symptoms of botulism. I can't confirm that it was in fact the disease. Someone had not one but two servings of the cheese at a movie theater yesterday. Yes, I did, and I think that led to that. I think so too because I now have confirmation that my dad also oh, got sick dad? last night. Aww. So that means the only thing did that he, he and eat I the had, cheese. We both had the cheese. Then why don't you call? You need to call the theater. That's what I want to know. You do? Am I supposed to call them? Oh, yeah. Like, hey, guys, listen, we were in that mummy showing where you cut it off in the middle yesterday. I'm sorry, by middle, I mean the very end at the climax. So my dad and I both decided to walk out of the theater and get some nacho cheese. Get some more for the pretzels that we had. (laughs) Well, it was my dad's first round, but it was my second because I'm sick. And so then I had the nacho cheese and I left happy. But a couple of hours later, um, well, let's just say I spent the night, uh, you know, next to a certain porcelain object. Sometimes together, sometimes separate, but very close. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I slept in the bathtub. <laughs> I just, just, in case, just in case something you know, happened. Because, you know, try to you sleep. You need to tell them because I think, like, I figure for the cheese dip, it's probably, like, always going Always at a certain temperature. And so it's yeah. not like they empty it out each day. Okay. Like when I get my like my eyebrows waxed and the wax is just in the pot. Right. And so they just warm it up and it just stays at a temperature. So maybe it oh, needs to be cleaned out. The extent to which I appreciate this conversation. I was describing this to a friend last night and she said to me, she's like, well, doesn't the cheese like come in a bag? And so that way they just lift the it, bag up and put true, a new you, bag in. That's and sometimes I, what you do with a crock pot. Right. Like if you're making and you don't want to, you don't want to have a cleanup thing. So you just lift it up. I just feel like that was very wishful thinking where it's like, I'm sure it comes in a bag and the bag is changed every day and they always take time to carefully clean it and never use the same bag on a different day i wonder how many days the cheese can stay in there i just assume that it's like hey um you know what this is the cheap tuesday thing like that this is the cheap cheese day so get the cheap cheese out guys and it's not like because i've had the cheese with pretzels too it's never hot like too hot when you get it no it's weird but how it stays liquid for a long time it stays liquid but it's never too hot so i wonder if it's not getting hot enough to kill the germs that's the botulism it's breaking it down that's why you need the heat so okay This phone call goes like this. I call the theater, like, hi, can I speak to a manager? And they're like, oh, great. Here's this guy. Here you go. Here's this guy calling. Now, do I start with, hey, I just want to be clear. Mm. I don't want anything free. I'm not trying to get a free whatever, but I've got to tell you that last night after the movie, I moved into my bathroom. (laughs) I stayed there all night. And I stayed there all night. And my dad did as well. Okay, so here's something that I do. If I am calling to complain about something, Mm -hmm. I actually apologize like it's my fault. You know, like you start the phone call conversation like, 
I'm so sorry. It's, you know, something happened with me after your thing. I just wanted to let you know in case anybody else. Just want to let you know that one of my roommates had to keep bringing me toilet paper and bottles of water. <laughs> Gatorade. The, all the electrolytes. <laughs> like all night last night. And so then and... that way, it's not like you're going both guns blazing mad at them because you got the botulism. But instead, they feel bad because you're so apologetic. With your mistake of ordering the cheese. I want to tell you how sorry I am that uh, I had to get an IV of liquid this morning. uh, Because yesterday, (laughs) I had your botulism cheese. Just call them and tell them so they don't leave it out. I'm sorry, but I'm just telling you, you got to have somebody change the cheese, guy. Okay? Can you film? Can you record the conversation? You got... You have to change the cheese out. Please record the conversation and we can change the person's voice. I don't know if you guys have been changing the cheese, if you've ever changed the the cheese. cheese. If not, it's time. But you've got to change the cheese. Call them. You think so? Don't post on their Facebook page. This is more than that. I want to put it on their Facebook page. Anybody, and I want to post like, did anybody else? (laughs) At this showing and put the showing time. Get crazy sick on cheese yesterday. Okay, maybe try that then. And then the manager will contact you. The worst of the riot 2017 sets a new standard for mediocrity in broadcasting. Congrats, guys. You did it. Again. Man, you know, sometimes you think to yourself, you know what? We're friends. We are. We're friends. And you wouldn't do that without me. You wouldn't go. You would hold that as a sacred trust that the two of us would go together. Yes, other people can go, but you would not go without me. And then you just casually mentioned offhand, oh, yes, I forgot. <laughs> Last night I went to Giordano's Pizza without you. I assume you would not want to come. I think you were gone already. Well, we would go at lunch. Yeah, you know what, though? I just what? I just decided. You, did, you didn't want to tempt me away from my lunchtime run? No, 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 not lunchtime, but I just decided, you know, like, hey, that was the moment. And I was still afraid lunchtime would take longer because this is deep dish Chicago style pizza. Betrayal! <laughs> you betrayed me! I thought Before it would God be- in this room of witnesses, you <laughs> have admitted your betrayal. Yeah, I went to do And now you owe me big. In our neighborhood, uh, I f- bought you breakfast yesterday, <laughs> and the <laughs> only thing you could think is I'll <laughs> eat without him. That's true. That's true. Uh, but yeah, the uh, Chicago deep dish pizza that we like. Just, that's enough. I don't want to hear. About opened it. in our area, so you went. And, I did. And I feel like they're not quite ready. Not and I'm going to say that as nicely as possible. And I think I just did. Well, because you want to believe in them. Well, I think it's because I know what Giordano's tasted like in Chicago, uh-huh. and this feels like people are not 100 percent quite trained, and things weren't like 100 percent the best eating experience. Yeah. Um. Still very good, but yet. Not not like they're not ready yet. Right. Like maybe okay. they just needed a few more weeks or a few more days. Hey, I sometimes a restaurant opening can be a little rough. And you think a lot of times they're probably in a business school somewhere. Somebody's like, you only get one chance to make, make your first, first impression. impression. Exactly. But I've gone places where I've been like, you know what? I feel like this is going to happen. It just hasn't it's happened yet. It's just not yet. the right moment. So I told Eric, I said, when we come back, it's going to be like maybe in a month. Because then maybe they got it got it all together. Yeah. Well, okay. But uh, I suppose you know it's fine. I'd like to go, but don't you worry, Nikki. I'll just go. <laughs> when do uh, we go in a month? You know. Well, maybe we maybe. won't go, but <laughs> we can go. go we'll go separately. I, it's fine. I actually like to eat alone. <laughs> maybe I can get a seat by the window. I can just stare out it. See all by yourself. People walk in like, who's that lonely man eating a whole pizza by himself? Now, while I was there, I thought, oh, I wish Obi was here. And then that reminded me, we also still... you betrayed me? Whoops. (laughs) (laughs) My bad. (laughs) We also still need to, either together or not, um, go to Ikea, which just opened one road over two for breakfast. Well, I'm sure you've probably... I mean, you've already been at least once. Why take me? It's fine. Uh, it was right. on a weekend and you weren't around. I need to develop other friendships because this one is not working out. So uh, I need to have a whole host of friendships to choose from because Nikki obviously does. 
because I'm just not including you. But she's like, hey, let me tell you about all the fun things I did last night when you weren't here. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I assume since you were gone from work and I didn't want to call available, you. available uh, to <laughs> do something fun. But it's fine. It's okay, fine. good. I'm glad it's fine with you. I know. It's fine. Nikki, that's like a girl saying it's fine. Oh, it means it's not fine? It's not fine. Anyone feel depressed now that Christmas is over? Eh, don't worry. You're not depressed. That's just the feeling you get listening to the worst of the riot on Radio U. So yesterday, after Nikki and I went to the gun store, we were on our way back to the radio station. Also known as we went to lunch. With our newly purchased ammo. (laughs) Yes, we did buy some bullets or something. Everything that I just told you is true. Everything. (laughs) And what follows was true also. Uh, Nikki began to talk about how much she likes getting vanilla in soda. And then I saw something happen. She didn't just tell us like, oh, I'm really enjoying this vanilla Sprite. She got this huge maniacal grin and started talking about how great vanilla is and how you can add it to everything and it's so delicious. And oh my gosh, vanilla! Ah! That's not a hundred percent reenactment of what the car ride back was, but Are you yes, sure? it's pretty Are close. You sure, it's pretty darn no, close. No, I just I'm super excited because I want to try a. Uh, Diet Canada Dry with vanilla, uh-huh. but I don't. I never remember to get it at the store, and it's not like they usually have Diet Canada Dry in the gas station. Yeah, okay. and it's not on on tap or something anywhere. Well, that's true. So I that and is I true. I was joking. Normally, when I I fly, that's the only time I have Canada Dry. Yeah. Um. So I'll have to keep some vanilla with me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nikki, did you know that a vanilla is addictive? Is it? It is. Oh man. And I'm starting to No, it's not. It's I... just really smooth, you know? Really? It's really good. Here's it like it makes you feel good. It reminds you of what it's like to be alive. Things no, like it that. doesn't. That's not from the the online report on it, is no, it? No, but like what I'm saying is like, is that how you feel when you drink it? Like everything's down and you know, pretty soon you're like, you know, what I just need is a little pick me up, something to get me through the day. You I'm know? not gonna say that hasn't happened a couple of times. You're not going to say that you have to rotate different Wendy's so they don't know that it's no, you? No, I do that for anything. <laughs> I don't like people to be like, hey, weren't you here last week with the same thing? Like, I'm consistent with what I like. Uh, so, no, I, I do that with anything. Yeah. According to the British Medical Journal, uh, Vanilla they is... They don't know. They don't know what they're talking about, do they? They're, they're full of Why crap. Why are you spreading these lies? So- False news alert. <laughs> Over Man, there. It ain't nothing but fake news <laughs> fake up in there. News, that's right. <laughs> Nikki, this was a report from 2008. That was before fake news even existed. Uh-uh. Everything was true before this, President Trump this, got elected. This started it off. <laughs> If you say so. I'm just concerned about you. That's all. No, I saw, I, like, I, I saw the, I know. the level, the depth of excitement yes, that I saw about the vanilla. I have so vanilla. little to be excited about. Oh, see? No, now, see, that's hear, actually what you say. Did you guys hear what she no, just said? But, I have so little. Just give me this no, one no. thing. Now, I fixed it because now I'm on to water. I got vanilla a new water. water? I got a new water bottle. Do you think vanilla would be good in water? You know what, Nikki? If you wanted to, you could just start drinking straight from the bottle. A vanilla. <laughs> why that not? sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? It sounds um, ridiculous, but uh, why don't we try it? Delicious. I'll be right back. No, I thought maybe I'll just have sparkling water and see if a, just a splash of vanilla tastes to it. <laughs> Sugar-free vanilla, mind well, you. Well, you know, the thing to think about, too, is I don't know if you've heard this, but uh, I have friends. Now, this is I'm not making this up. They go to Mexico. They live in Southern California. Yeah. And when they go to Mexico, one of the things they always buy is vanilla. And they bring it back? Yes. They say that vanilla from Mexico, I don't know what the difference is and where it comes from or how they make it, but they say that it is so much better uh, when you buy it across the border. You come back and the customs stop you. They're like, what are you bringing? It's vanilla, okay? "Mm -hmm." Just vanilla. Uh, You know what, Bob, we're going to need a cavity search on this one. (laughs) I think she's lying. (laughs) Tammy, thank you so much. Tammy texted, says, I love vanilla too. Uh, Favorite flavor in coffee. That's so nice of you to join That's good. My, my vanilla group. <laughs> uh, well, you know, every, all you addicts, you got to stick together. It's a support group. 
Water with vanilla extract in it is delicious, especially if you put a sweetener in it like stevia. I can't start putting all this stuff in my water. You know what else is delicious? <laughs> so Coca-Cola. Not, like, that sounds like spray right there. <laughs> That's my Sprite Zero, but thank you for texting in as well. I do think on our way back from Chris's launch, once we go ahead and get what? Let's see, we're going for lunch and then popcorn. We're going to need some soda. We're going to so need something. Well get ourselves some vanilla soda on the way back. <sighs> you know? 99 cents. We can find it. I know a place. And this is why I drink too. Now, that sounds weird. I'm, ta- I, I'm <laughs> because- taking that out of context. <laughs> I know so- you are. I know you are. But because over there, he's always sipping on something and everybody's sipping. my water on- and coffee that I have over here? What did you already drink this morning? What? <laughs> Oh, well, I mean, sure, I had my morning diet mountain, too, but I'm on to my coffee chaser now. Yeah, so the it, I never, before they did this it's show. It's just water, Nikki. I got a new container <laughs> that I've got my water in here. So uh, I'm done talking about it. It's not a problem. It's not a problem at all. I got money on the fact you're going to be Googling this later. You're going to be like, wait, is it a problem? Nope, it's perfect. Am I addicted? I can't stop. No, but another sign is like if you don't like when people talk about it because it makes you agitated. That is a sign. But I, it's not what I'm feeling. It's always it's always about you. Just give me this one thing. Just this one thing. It's all I have. Just My whole that. life is terrible. No, it's not that bad. It's not. Um, oh, Nikki needs a little sip. <laughs> no, it's just so smooth and so nice. All right, we're done talking Come to about mama, it. Come baby bottle. Mm, warm you up. Or mommy up. <laughs> After listening to the worst of the riot 2017, you won't blame Nikki for wanting a serious raise in 2018. So last night, Nikki and I definitely shot the guns. Went to the shooting range. We went to a place called Blackwing Shooting Center. and They were so nice. So, it, so very nice. You know what? I'll have to say that I feel like everyone should go visit a place like that. Not, you don't have to buy a gun. You don't even have to shoot. But I think you would be surprised by what the gun crowd is like mm-hmm. versus what you think they are like. There are all these kind of uh, stereotypes sure. that float around because of what you see maybe in a movie or on TV or whatever. Very, very different crowd of people than what you think. Uh, everyone was very laid back, but also very serious about, and by serious, I don't mean like, I'm going to be sweet when I get this gun. I mean like, hey there, tough guy. Let's be careful with that. They're very serious about it, but yet it was very relaxed on the other hand. Yeah. It was just very nice. Dude, we had so much fun. We had a guy that actually taught us how to shoot yesterday. Yes. His resume is absurd. He's from the UK. He was a, he's Nicholas Angel from Hot Fuzz. Okay. He's part of the, I didn't want to tell him Hot Fuzz quotes, but I was just like, that's you. But I actually thought (laughs) I was like, is he part of the rapid response team? And he goes, I was part of SWAT. They call it rapid response. And I was like, Nicholas Angel. (laughs) That's amazing. So he did that. Like he did protection duty for Prince Charles, Margaret Thatcher, uh, Tony Blair. He was part of a bomb disposal unit. This guy was, and he worked for MI6. Yep. Shut up. Plus MI5, the domestic service. Plus, now on his resume, he helped, helped to teach riot, shoot guns. the riot about gun safety. And I'll tell you something else, guys. Nikki's a crack shot. Not even You're lying. really good. No, no. The show is good. We're good shots. The show is good. I mean, only at 15 feet. So, I mean, if you're like... <laughs> Don't pressure us to do, like, distance shooting or anything. <laughs> like, we're not we're not going to be joining the national team or anything not like anytime that. Anytime soon. But, and we did great. Now, out of all the guns we shot, what was your favorite? It's a CZ. Um, and Eric told me what number it is, but I'm okay. still new, so I'm still yeah, learning. I don't remember it it's either. a 75 or a 95. I don't remember. Well, I ta- I spent some time talking to the guy out in the shop about it, yeah. My- Mike, who was actually the reason why we ended up uh, going there in the first place. Who's a riot listener? We went over there, and he was telling me that the gun that we shot, it's like a sport model, mm-hmm. and so it, uh, like, it had an upgraded trigger, upgraded, like, it was smooth. It, it was, was nice. Like to get the gun we looked at. I don't even want to know. Way over a thousand bucks. <laughs> oh, come on. 
Yeah. I know. I know. It was very expensive. It was awesome. I, I had never, I'd only gone to a, a range one time for yeah. something for Radio U before, but it was so much fun. It's fun, obviously. We were with Chris and Eric and everybody there, but I could see going back and have, like, actually having an enjoyable time. Oh, yeah, totally. It's like a sport. Totally. <laughs> it is. Um, and I ended up, my favorite of all the guns we shot, the CZ was an easy favorite. Oh, that was nice. It really was. But, like, other than that, I liked the Glock 19 Did the you? best. Yeah. The best. Like, that was, yep. So that will be coming soon to our Radio You Riot YouTube channel. But we will let you know when you have a chance to watch us go to the uh, shooting range. So those videos are coming soon, but you can actually see photos mm-hmm. if you want right now. That's on Radio You Riot on Facebook, and you can search it or link to it through Riot. But again, thank you, Blackwing, for having us out. It was so much fun. Oh, dude. <laughs> we really had a really good time. And David. The Brit that knew what was up. <laughs> we had, dude, he was, we had so much fun yesterday. And we so. actually learned a lot. Oh, when I he learned gave us so like, much. He gave us like a 20 minute um, course in it. I was like, well, even in my mind, though, I would not go to a shooting range, but like you'd play a game or right. like, oh, I've got a hand, you know, like a gun. No, we were, I was totally doing a lot of things wrong. Absolutely. I mean, all, there were so many things that I was like, this is how you do it. And it was nope. like, no, that's not how you do it. So it was very good to learn. Yes, indeed. It's the worst of the riot 2017 on Radio U. Lucky number 13, people. Step right up. Lucky number 13. 13 days without soda. <laughs> I was wondering. I was like, what's 13 about? Lucky number 13. Are you? Because, okay, again, if, you're, if you've not been with us the last 13 days, OB had done a cleanse where you take away a lot of the food that you eat. And then you slowly the things that make you happy. reintroduce them back to see if you have any problems uh, with any of those foods. But you have yes. to introduce them back kind of one at a time. But really, you're not supposed to introduce back soda because Ever. that kind of breaks all the rules. This is what I've discovered. And it's a little disturbing, but it's this is honest, is that soda is an emotional crutch for me. Is it? More yes. than just, you know, more a, than I realized. Just a beverage. So like, tonight or last night, I had this thing that kept me out later than normal, which kept me up later than normal. So I didn't get as much sleep as I normally would. So a little grumpy because, you know, you wake up, you didn't get enough sleep. Normally, what I would do is uh, this would be the kind of morning where I'd say, you know what? I don't do this every day, but I'll just <laughs> slide on over and get myself a really big soda. Just something to so, freshen you up this morning. It would be some sugar and some caffeine and some whatever, and I would just, that would be like my little treat for the hard work I put in sitting there last night listening. And this morning, I can't have that. So I just have to face the consequences alone. Now, I do have coffee, which is great. Thankfully, you at least, I mean, if you can imagine if you had to take that away, too, you would not be doing this. Real talk, I don't think I could swing it. Uh, I don't think. I don't think the show could handle it. I can only quit so many things at once. (laughs) I need some time. But I, again, it's almost a little embarrassing. Like, when I look at myself and I'm like, man, are you for real right now? You can't handle not are having you your sippy real? cup are you telling me that soda was an emotional crutch for you that it got you through that it, you leaned on it when times were hard you're pathetic and then the other part of me is just crying while it yells at it oh it's rough dude with, with a cleanse though the soda didn't really bother you of not having it until nope. like a le- nine, maybe it's day been, ten. It's been way more this week. Yeah, uh, where my body was just like, well, we had fun last week, but where's the soda? Now we're breaking down because they they feel like your body's freaking out because it knows it's serious, like it's not doing it, and it thought it was just playing a game for two weeks. Yeah. So now it's like, wait a minute, you didn't say this is for real. Yeah, it's something. But is it getting better? You're not as agitated, or I, I, are you just I don't, tired from I don't know. yesterday? It, like honest to goodness, it comes in waves. Mm. Like I will have these moments. And the other thing is that I just get irritated fast about things that I feel like are not aren't worth it. But in the moment, it's very hard to like make that distinction. Like something happens, I get really mad, and it's just like, dude, dude, you know this isn't worth it. What do you know about it? <laughs> you got a lot of inner dialogue going on. Well, I talk to myself all day, which is why this show is so easy. Uh, but <laughs> I'm... Man, it's real. Sure. Like I'm I'm looking for, you know, not all crutches are for your legs. 
Some of them are for Well, a lot of people mentioned try like a, a sparkling water or a flavored water. That might do the trick for you. I'm, I might do that today. But I, you know Maybe what? Maybe you could get a Mountain Dew flavored water. Don't say it. I'd take a Mountain Lightning right now if, <laughs> if I had to. <laughs> You'd take anything. I'd settle for that. <laughs> Lick it off the ground. I would. It's fine. Yeah. yeah, dude, it's tough, man. I, I'll, I guess I'm saying this to say if you're quitting something... I get, I'm hugging you right now. I'm hugging you. We're in this together. No matter what day number you're on. And if you're thinking about starting something, I want you to look me in the eye right now. Eye to eye, person to person. Look at both, stere- like both sides of the stereo. All right, mono e persono. Don't do it. Don't. Do not do it. Don't start. <laughs> Is it? It's hard to stop. Hey, it's been impressive, though, to see you be so strong. Hey, I'm standing strong. I you sat are. across from people drinking soda and eating pizza for three hours last night. And I was like, you know what? It's cool. I had baked some vegetables before I came. <laughs> Doing so fine. I'll just drink this water here. It's delicious. It's not even sparkling. And it, there is no flavor. Hey, kids, this is nature's nectar I got over here. So don't you worry yourself about well, it. you're doing, me. doing very well. I'm doing great. <laughs> Nikki's mom said it wasn't very nice of us to call this the worst of the riot. Then we played it for her. She's okay with it now. It's the worst of the riot 2017 on Radio U. Remember that we agreed on a safe space, guys, to <laughs> Before discuss. you tell us, well, first, just a reminder, anytime you want to hear a song, feel free to call or text us, 877 radio U. or if there's a comment concerning Obi's concern that maybe you can help with. I think there's something wrong with me. What do you think? Well, okay. Um, Narrow well, it down. Here we go. Let's start, <laughs> let's start big and work our way in. Okay. Yesterday, around this time, I told you guys that I'm having soda dreams now, where I go to gas stations and I want some soda. Soda. Yes, because you've been off soda for about two months. Right, and we think it was triggered because I had a 7-Up last week, and my body was like, we're back in. Now, that was only because you were sick. Right. So, a medicinal 7-Up. It fixes everything. It's That's what doctors used to prescribe in the um, 1980s, <laughs> back in the past. I think it was the 1880s, not well, 1980s. Whatever, it's one number <laughs> off, it's fine. I think it was a long, long, long time ago. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Um, but then yesterday I saw Michael walk through our break room and he was holding a Diet Mountain Dew and he was talking to me. But the he whole time a, he had a two liter. I was just staring at the Mountain Dew. I was just staring eyes at it. He was, ta- he was talking to me and I'm just like, <laughs> I just can't take my eyes off it. You can only look at that. I can't take my eyes off it. Do you feel it. yourself like wanting to move from, because a lot of times it's hard to keep a, we're all in, never again will you have soda. Right. Or do you want to go to a more um, what, like approach where you're just not having the amounts of soda that you had before, but you can have it every so often? Um, I'm afraid. Which sometimes they I'm say of that because to me that feels like the like you're I'll fall just, back in the I'll pool just all of the soda. way back in, yeah. Because sure. I've done this before where I've quit and, or I'll moderate and it like the moderation never sticks. I end up all the way back in. And the one thing I will say about the no soda thing is it's shocking how much more energy and how much more awake just in general that I am. Like I will go through the entire riot drinking a cup of coffee, meaning eight ounces of coffee. Like I'll still have half of a tumbler left. And I used to drink sometimes a 44 ounce soda and drink all of my coffee and I would still feel exhausted. Well, someone texted yesterday when you were mentioning your soda thing of they every so often will have a clear caffeine free soda. Yes. So maybe that maybe is Maybe that's my moderation. Maybe that's your thing. Yeah, maybe. Maybe, it is. maybe that is a moderation. Now, I want you to see if this ties in, okay? Yeah. So I had the soda dream. I was staring at Michael's 2 liter and then last night I had this dream. Oh no. That Lecrae was really mad at me. And I was in the bathroom and like, but we were at like a public place, like at a concert or something. And I was just in there and I wasn't like using the bathroom. I was like standing in front of the mirror and like Lecrae came in the bathroom and he was mad at me. Yeah. But I don't know what he was mad about. So does soda pop into this dream at all or? No, but I just wonder if it's related. Like, do you think that Lecrae represents soda in my dream? (gasps) And they're mad at you. They're mad at me and I'm in the bathroom cleansing. Because you're at a club, which is like the fun part of your life. Uh Uh-huh. And you're not having fun anymore. Not. And you're, you can't even do your job. Maybe Lecrae is the music. He's the music. It's Radio U. And 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 Radio U walked in wearing Lecrae's face. Yes. And it's just like 
What is up? <laughs> will you drink some soda, will you? Maybe that's what it represents, or it represents the, the bands. They're not happy with you or the listeners. I don't know, but I'll tell you what. He was pretty mad. And I remember thinking, Lecrae is mad why at me. Why are you mad at me, Lecrae? I don't know what Someone I Someone just tuned in and is like, why? But you don't realize, that was a dream. Was just a dream. Just a dream he had. Or was it? You think that Maybe this is still a dream. Maybe and I'm, I'm here to make right you feel better. Oh my gosh, the dream. It's I'm on the third level. I gotta get I'm listening for the kick. <laughs> what are you supposed to do? What was that movie where you spin the thing? Yeah. Inception. I need my dream totem. That's it. That's exactly right. <laughs> it's the worst of the riot 2017 on Radio U. So there I was at Orlando Studios, Florida. What was, I think, a pretty great place. Like, I don't know that I'm dying to go back, but... Well, doing, you had, I mean, you had the perfect opportunity since there was no one there. The park was, I mean, there was probably less than a thousand people in the entire park. So, got to ride everything, do all these things. It was great. This so, was at uh, Universal's in Orlando on Friday before OB left on Saturday. So, he was not there for the hurricane. So, Friday night, there I am. Uh, one of the last things, actually, I think it did end up being the last ride that I got on that night. I uh, got on it. The Mummy Returns. So which mummy is that for? It was for the movie called The Mummy Returns. But so, not the, um, the Tom Cruise one? No. Back in the early 2000s, they made a... Maybe it's the late 90s? Early, I don't know. They made a mummy trilogy. Brendan Fraser, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And so this was an actual indoor roller coaster. So unlike a lot of the other things that we had done... Um, it was a real roller coaster? Oh, yeah, it totally was. So uh, you get in there, and a couple of their gimmicks that I thought were interesting, sometimes you would go backwards. Uh, I think we may have gone sideways at some point. And then there were a couple of rooms that you went into where they had flames, like flames going across the ceiling, flames shooting out, of, and it was hot, and it smelled like gas. And it was just like... I actually don't like this very much, but whatever. So we get to the end of the ride and just this rando guy next to me, all of a sudden the ride stops and we're sitting there and then he was in the seat next to you or just near like when you were getting out directly to my left. Oh, the seat next to you. And he threw up. (laughs) I mean, it was just like this very violent. It was this. Well, it was all very fast. And the thing that got me was like the ride had stopped. So, like, I thought if you're going to throw up in a roller coaster, it's going to be on the hill, on the whatever. But this was the end of the ride. Yeah. And he just popped. He just had to throw up. And, okay, Nikki, I'll have to tell you that I thought about you because, one, normally in circumstances like that, I would burst out laughing. But instead, I experienced... (laughs) Compassion. Calm. Calm, because you just can't laugh at him in front of him. Calm and compassion. In fact, I still haven't really laughed about it, but I was just like... Okay, this guy's really sick. All right. And then I just thought, might have gotten some on me, but I'm fine with it. I'm going to be fine with it. Aren't you glad it it wasn't during the ride or like if you were behind the person? Yes. That'd be gross. And I did. I just thought, okay, I'm not going to laugh. I'm not going to cry. And if I have any on me, I'm going to calmly wipe it off as if nothing Nothing has occurred. (laughs) See, if something happens to you that's truly terrible, (laughs) your body just gets into this weird trance-like thing where your body's like, we're going to make this work. Okay, we're not shutting down. I'm going to be fine. You're so calm. It's scary. Uh, The thing that bothered me the most about it was I was... Perfectly clean, by the way. Yeah. I uh, so well until you get on like a micro level, right? On a so. microbiotic like well, yes, I'm filthy. But uh, I get off and uh, I went ahead and told the lady, I was like, "Hey," um, and and she was just like, "That's fine," like it was no big deal. And then it occurred to me, like this lady's sense of calm about the fact that someone just threw up on the ride and she has to clean it up now. She's too calm about it. Mm, and sure, the reason she also breaks down. The reason she's calm is because she does this all the time. Maybe she's not the one. Maybe she delegates it, but you just don't know it. Maybe not. But my thought was, I just looked at it and I thought, hmm, the seat I sat in had been thrown up in for sure. The the little uh, strap that came across my waist, that's been it's just been puked up all on. over. The handholds that I had my hands on, yeah, people just be throwing up on that all the time. All no the time. big deal. So here's a couple of things that could happen with this. One, they throw that dust on it and they call it a day because that's the end of the <laughs> that's day. It. Okay. Two is they never actually really clean it up. <laughs> or three, they just hose it out and it's fine. That's what I think happens. So you just got to wonder where in the line is that. But, you know, Nikki, I feel like hosing it. I don't feel like that's a completely like 
I don't feel like that's all clean. Maybe not. You know, I feel like maybe they need to get in there with some tweezers and some crevice tools and go to town. (laughs) They're not doing that. They're I not doing that. They're not they're doing that. They're not doing they've that. They've never done that. Even on a normal cleaning or a deep cleaning day, they've never done that. The worst of the riot is over, but the fun can keep going. Hey, I saw you checking out my goods. Check the riot blog or stalk us on social media. You want to sample them? A little try before you buy, huh? Through riot.radiou.com. Come Talking to about mama, it. baby bottle. Mm, warm you up. Or mommy up. 